So, in the transfer printing processes, we will be taking this as a last lecture. This topic we will try to wind up today. Before this, let us see what we had done and uh, we had understood in the last time how the dye gets transferred from paper to the fabric and what is the mean free path. So, in the transfer you have the diffusion of ink from layer to the vapor, the diffusion of the vapor between the air gap and absorption at the fiber surface and then diffusion. So, these are the things which take place which are obviously governed by the approximately the ideal gas laws. So, on the paper we have talked about what kind of paper, we have also talked about the type of dyes that we may need. So, the binder also has some role to play and the role obviously is that till the dye is transferred, it should hold the dye on the paper in the design in the specified area. So, it is also expected that this particular type of a binder would not have affinity for the dye and if it has no affinity for the dye, then the diffusion through the layer would also take place in a faster way and much less will be retained in the layer, the polymer layer which we have. Because our aim is only till the time it has been used for transfer, but this time probably is longer than let us say in conventional printing when we have a binder or we have a paste which has to be dried and then fixing takes place. In this case, this paper may be stored for a longer period before somebody uses it. But this binding is relatively simple binding, you are not really expecting any cross linking to take place, it is just that there is a layer and unlike pigment printing where you had to wash your fabrics where the binder had a role of increasing the wash fastness here, something like that is obviously not expected. So, in such as such it is a simple process, but still you need to bind and obviously it should not have much affinity. Some of the examples which we see here written as a polyvinyl butyral which has a structure of something like this which is a polymer. So, you can make a polymer layer. Other things which you are quite familiar ethyl cellulose or cellulose acetate and carboxymethyl cellulose, all of them can be used and so we hope that transfer will take place. But the question sometimes come how much of a binder and how much of a dye? I mean, if the ratio of binder and the dye changes, then obviously the film layer become thick if the binder is more. That means, if you have lighter shades versus darker shades, so the percentage transfer or transfer efficiency can change. You may like to have such type of binders which would be relatively more independent of the this concentration of a color ink in the binder, which may not happen always, but you would like something to happen. Between these things, one reported um, study says the dye absorption rate versus the dye and thickener ratio, that means how much is thickener, which is basically this binder which actually dries on the thing, so these four we are talking about and the dye. If you see on the x axis that you have a dye thickener ratio, where in the first is 2 is to 1 and goes up to 1 is to 3. And so, what you generally see is at least from the look of it, these two types of binders are relatively more 
inert to this ratio, the change is not very high. So, when you do a print which may have different shades where the dye may be very low or very high, you will still have the transfer. I mean, if the transfer rate is same, then this can happen. If the transfer rate becomes very different, then the time of transfer you are keeping fixed, 30 seconds or whatever, then the expected tones which are supposed to be on the paper may not get transferred exactly in the same manner the way you would have expected it because the rate of transfer may be different and therefore the time required for a complete transfer may be different and so things can change. So, it would be nice that if you have binders which generally are so inert to the dye they have no interaction and the film is also relatively more amorphous rather than compact film. The machines for the transfer printing are very simple machines. The only thing that you have required is that there should be a plain surface where you can put your fabric and the paper and you should be able to apply some pressure and heat. These are the only thing that are required and therefore, in some cases the speeds can be also very high in continuous machines, uh, which speeds you can never think of whenever you do a conventional printing, which is quite interesting. So, you can have something like a flatbed transfer press, which may be for garments, these goods and because if you have this type of a arrangement where the pressure is applied intermittently. So, you cannot obviously have continuous flow. So, piece goods are there because transfer printing also used for garments and piece goods. So, some such type of machines can be simple or sometimes people only use their own iron and then put the design wherever you want and then you can also get. So, it is a simple way of looking at, but of course, when you have a machine and some automation you will have better control of temperature which is obviously required. Now, you know that if temperature differences there things can be very different and uniform pressure applied on the whole surface that is an important part. If that can be done the life could be easy. Simple process of a flat bed type. If you look at a continuous type this print roller which is a large roller it looks like a familiar kind of a site, a roller printing machine also looks like this, but overall this configuration is quite similar to a palmer dryer, where there is material entering from one side and exiting from the other side and the roller is quite big. And so, all the process gets completed, so it get completed if you want to give 30 seconds or more it should be possible to complete the process within this area. So, you have a blanket, you have a paper and you have the fabric entering from one side getting out of the other side. At a contact time of 20 seconds some of these things based on the type of fabric and the type of design you may be able to achieve very high production rates which you will never ever think of any other process that you can think. Because you are at a higher temperature, transfer is in a, a vapor form and it is clean process. So, this advantage nobody can say that does not exist in case this itself is the thing and if you have the same design and the same paper and everything is there you may just be able to make money on standard designs like if you have checks and dots and little small thing which are popular then you can keep doing this at a fast rate. Sometimes if the fabric is thick the GSM is high then you may require some vacuum so that the dye is facilitated to move in the direction of the fabric. 
sometimes not this machine, but a flat bed machine could be used also for carpet printing where you may have to use vacuum to ensure that the dye vapor go in the direction in which they are expected to go. So two things obviously these machines are doing is reducing the air gap and of course maintaining temperatures. Here one important thing is that you keep some kind of vacuum and you got to provide a vacuum seal which means that this area in the whole chamber as it moves in and the things move in and come out is relatively more stable point and there is no gaps. So this itself is a in some sense is a little more complex technology because if something is entering and if you pressure to put too much pressure then also you have a problem of either paper tearing or the fabric getting compressed. But if you do not do that then you cannot maintain vacuum. So in there will be very few continuous processes you may have seen where the process is happening under vacuum. Mostly it is all atmospheric pressure, all continuous processes are atmospheric pressure. But doing anything under vacuum obviously requires special seals from where the fabric can enter and come out without additional tearing pressure or torture to the fabric. So that is what we had learnt about sublimation transfer which obviously is the most popular and uh, in India also there are smaller companies, not so big companies who are making paper, transfer paper in and around Delhi and uh, other places as well and they are able to sustain their business and uh, what we realized obviously in this is polyester and dispersed dye. All other methods have been fascinating or big challenges actually to, to anybody who is a technologist. These are big challenges which somebody would like to take and uh, some people have taken it as a challenge. So what it means is that fabrics which are not thermoplastics, we do not respond to dry heat and are hydrophilic to begin with, the dispersed dye obviously cannot be used. But people have tried this wet transfer, the only thing one should appreciate in this is that when you dry and transfer and if you want to in a wet state, the stability of the paper and therefore the interface of the paper and the fabric surface may not be so steady. In case it is not so steady then there can be problem. In a dry heat paper is quite stable, the fabric anyway keeps working and so there is no apparent shift between the two and if that happens in any case then obviously print quality is going to go down that is one and of course there is a challenge of finding such type of dyes and transfer systems which do quick transfer because this will not be very high temperature. If it is not a very high temperature obviously rate of transfer will be different and so you may require more time sometimes. And then stability of the paper sometimes can be an issue. And so theoretically speaking this technology although a lot of people have tried has not become commercially very successful textile. Wool, I mean it has been tried on cotton also, it has been tried on wool and some of the uh, work, in fact some of the commercialized work is what we can look into. So the principle basically remains the same but the medium is now water because we are now talking about hydrophilic material which is the fabric 
and so you have similar mechanism as you are looking at any other printing mechanism. So, diffusion control process and one of the processes which was commercialized was called the fast tram process. Steps of this particular fast tram process, they used first Lenasol reactive dyes and uh, the paper that were printed were called the Equatram W papers, which are commercial. One important thing is that because sometimes they will be coming in contact with water, so some coating etc. was required. So, Lenasol dyes on paper, the fabric obviously had to be pre padded. So, there is liquor, some viscosity is increased, it is not very low viscosity, but still it is a quite low viscosity. And you, this particular method did the transfer above 100 degree centigrade, which means a bit of a steam is get generating 30 to 60 seconds and then washing off to remove the unfixed type. So, any paper at 160 degrees for whatever little time that you have in moist condition can have an issue of crumpling, uneven shrinkage and so on and so forth. That problem of course was there. So, they worked on various systems and they also tried to make transfer machines specifically for wet transfer and the machine was marketed as dew print. So, basically as if condensation will take place and things like that. So, this is the way they marketed this machine and the important feature of that machine is a set of rollers. You see it is the same kind of a roller which was being used for a continuous transfer of heat transfer, but then you had blankets, but instead of that this has series of rollers, series of rollers everywhere which were applying pressure and this pressure was also continuously increasing from entry of the fabric to the exit of the fabric. So, therefore, there is a special machine, right. So, exerting a steadily increasing pressure up to the stage which was equal to the pressure of a padding mangle because there is a pre-treated fabric. So, whatever you wanted to add to the fabric, you do a padding treatment. So, you apply some pressure and get some expression. So, in the beginning the pressure is less when the transfer is taking place and the pressure increases as this fabric goes from this side to this side before exiting just making sure that the initial pressure not exceeded that is all, but hopefully you would have transferred all the dye. So, this machine was special till that time this machine was brought into the market, A wet transfer was not very nice and the people who actually became more interested ultimately were the wool people. So, you have a good research institute in Australia and of course, a nice work being done in UK on wool. So, they were obviously quite interested in doing this uh, wet transfer printing of wool. So, they, they, everybody was in a way fascinated with the transfer printing. So, you wanted to have uh, wool being printed, wool in any case is relatively much more rougher surface compared to any other surface, but it was an attractive process. So, people wanted to work around. Why do you need to keep increasing the pressure? Right. Initially, the material when it goes, the you allow some water to get heated some steam to get generated and then because the concentration 
of the dye on the paper is high. So you expect the transfer will start taking place. By the time it goes, the, the dye may have partly gone and so you want more and more to go as if you are squeezing the dye in and holding the paper all along also so that there is no slip that is one. So at the end and not more than mangle means that you do not really if you suppose 100 percent expression is there the transfer you want only of the liquid and you are not so much interested in transfer of the water if the water if you put more pressure the water and the dye can also come out of the uh, fiber in a reverse squeeze mode. So you do not want the pressure to be higher than that. This treatment is just I will give you the next one. So this is a reactive dye. So you have basically an alkali and uh, some viscosity modifier so that the spread it does not take place so much. You see like when you have a tailing effect in a dyeing padding system, you add sodium alginate and some such high molecular weight compound so that the tailing is reduced. So here also bit of a viscosity modifier, but still it is a padding process and not a paste process and that is the kind of thing basically. Alkali is there because you like it to be fixed. So wool people like this dye more which is the acryl amido, amido dyes which have this type of a reactive group which has got a possibility there is a double bond here. So there is a possibility that you can react from here. There is also a possibility that the bromine can come out and also a reaction can take place. And so the fastness of these was considered to be better. So various reactions are possible with this lenosol. So from the wool point of view, the one process which has been commercialized was using these dyes. So the challenge obviously was to create all types of shades so that you can get all tones. So it may uh, relate with the paper also. Yes that can happen and therefore they do some coating on the paper. Otherwise to make the paper stable a certain coating which will be relatively more hydrophobic so that the dry transfer takes place more and does not go the other side. So from the amino group, amino end group of a wool, one can expect various types of possible reactions. One is addition reaction where the double bond gets modified and you get a link like this which call addition reaction. Then the bromine can come out also and then double bond remains as it is and the wool gets attached in this manner. Here the wool has been attached in this manner. There is also a possibility of two wool molecules joining A and B. So sometimes it is considered as if it is a bifunctional reactive dye, but because the functional group actually is only one, this is the functional group. So you have the same molecule reacting with two end groups of the wool. So two molecules of wool could be actually reacting. Probability is very less because the moment first one reacts, getting the second one obviously has less opportunity and the steric hindrances will not help the second reaction very easily. So either this or that is possible. It is and then if double bond has to react then it can react and make 
ethoxy kind of a link or epimene type of a link which is more relatively more stable compared to not exactly stable I would say but that reaction also is possible but that means that double bond but double bond can remain as it is. It is better that the bromine goes out in from the reaction rather than stays that would be better because the bromine is uh, attached to a by a single bond uh, to a aliphatic carbon and so relatively easy to come come out. So, wool people were the one who first commercialized this process and uh, because of them the dye manufacturers also worked hard and tried to give many shades which are possible. Another process which was called the Kara trans process, but this strictly speaking is uh, not a wet transfer, but it does combine the, both the processes in some sense. So, dye is sublimable, the dye is sublimable, so they are using in a way a dry transfer process, but the fabric has something else also. So, what they use is a dye which is sublimable dyes, but they are also in a way mordant or the one which can be complexed with the metals. So, if something can make a complex with the metal if, and the metal ions are on the wool for example, then the same dye after transfer can now be combined and so wash fastness could be high. If normal dispersed dye is used and it gets transferred also because there is no affinity so it will keep coming out without much problem. But in this case if it is metallized and then it will not come. So, this was one process which was also commercialized. So, wool is uh, pre-treated with some surfactant and acidic environment. So, you have more uh, positive charge generally they found lactic acid was the one which was more uh, giving more positive results and chromium they used chromium 3 they used as some salt on the thing. So, you pre-treat the wool with surfactants in this and thing and then you do the normal transfer normal transfer at 200 degrees for 30 seconds or whatever and then further take it for steaming. So, there is a post treatment which is a long period. So, you can appreciate it cannot be the process which is as fast as the dry transfer. So, after the transfer has taken place you are still going to speak the look at the comparison there is a 30 second versus 30 minutes for fixation. Urea may also be available in the pre-treated material and then wash it off. So, dye and metal complex is formed which predominantly is 1 is to 2 metal complex. 1 is to 1 also can form, but uh, 1 is to 2 is maximum that they found. So, once the metal complex is formed the and 1 is to 2 dye is 1 and uh, so the chances of its getting off are quite less because of the coordination bonds that the metal complex is going to make. So, this chelation is what happens here. People have tried using cobalt and iron also for fixation purposes. Again we are talking about wool only, but the moment you change the metal, the tone of the dye finally on the fiber is different because they are also they once they coordinate the amount the kind of light that is absorbed and reflected are different and so you get a different shade. So, different metals are going to give you different shades if they are too different then you may not like it and therefore, 
you can appreciate it will be very difficult for somebody to print a photographic print on this with this kind of a die theoretically possible but if choice of a metal ion itself changes the shade so photograph may be very different so but normal textile prints you would not have any problem invariably color could be any so light orange versus dark orange is as good as far as design is concerned but not the photograph so very difficult to print photographic print by wet transfer although it can be you can take a photograph and print it but what would look may not be same because in photographic true transfer is required so this process obviously had some concerns of using heavy metals but if you are using it for dyeing then you can use it for printing otherwise chromium and cobalt are um, not very preferred material although they found the chromium is the one which give quite true shades of whatever type with these dyes metallizable dyes iron gives something else iron from environment perspective is acceptable you know chrome and cobalt obviously not so much so in some sense is a combination of a dry transfer completely dry transfer and some wet systems also so modification but they were able to actually make it a patent and actually get the process therefore some interest was developed and the maximum interest obviously is in the australia as for the wool is concerned so wool was important to them so they tried other methods also which we had considered earlier also esterification etherification of the hydrophilic fiber so for wool they tried benzoylation so one is that you have changed the hydrophilic group to aryl groups so making it more hydrophobic so reception will be more or one of the thing was benzoylation to increase the affinity of dispersed dyes and one of the processes used benzoic anhydride instead of benzoyl chloride and used through dmf which they found was giving better now but the important thing is using a solvent which is not a regular solvent in a printing industry will always be a some challenge so little bit one or two points on the film release transfer printing also again well release for purposes other than the textile printing are still being done at levels which are very high commercial success but transferring film onto textile uh, has been tried so these also processes for textile are not very very popular printing particularly because even if the film gets transferred the textile has to be washed and then iron reiron rewashed reiron and so the requirements are slightly different but for various reasons people have been using some kind of a binder some kind of film on the thing rubberized prints for that matter where the abrasion resistance is not so high but for fashion reasons people do print so some of that type of thing i believe can be done by using a film release so what it means is the film is there and it gets release and the whole in some sense is being you have a transfer so this process means depositing the printed image as a film on to the textile material so as long as the film likes the ink or the dye it's okay so you're not really hoping that the ink likes the fiber as long as the film 
can be attached because film is a high molecular weight system. If it can remain as a film, therefore, if it gets transferred, then the whole of it stays onto the textile. As long as it stays on textile, you have the design and when you find for various use and abrasion resistance, it is not there, so you do not have. So, inks are also called plastisol ink. So, there is a because there is going to be a film formation and therefore, it is like a plastic being made. So, plastisols are there and uh, you can use polymers like vinyl chloride copolymers along with some plasticizers. Plasticizer you know is a compound which reduces the glass transient temperature of polymer and film in this case. So, it remains flexible right. So, if you a large number of polymers which are flexible polymers you have plasticizer in them. Sometimes the plasticizer with time can ooze out and you may have seen with time the polymers, the sheets they become rigid with time because the plasticizer can ooze out and come. So, chlorinated uh, paraffins or cyril, chrysyl uh, phosphate or dioctyl phosphate, these type of plasticizers are there along with pigment, they are dispersed properly to make a plastisol ink which is used to print a paper. So, this paper which is a release paper must release the whole film, should not have so much of a problem and if that is true, then things can happen. So, some of these papers which are commercially used for such type of things are coated with complex chromium complex of stearic acid or myristic acid. And once it is there, then as somebody has pointed before also the affinity towards the paper becomes less, the film may like to just get out of the surface whenever given an opportunity of pressure or temperature. So, this is the C13 type of an acid which is called the myristic acid and uh, this is the common C17 type which is steric acid. But because they make chromium complex, you know something like this happens. So, chrome complex are cationic. And this positively charged moiety gets attracted to generally negatively charged paper surface. You know, most of these surfaces, as you know, are negatively charged a little bit. So, the thing is that you have a hydrophobic end here and a hydrophilic end here. If hydrophilic end through the chrome etcetera goes on to the surface of the fabric. So, what remains outside the surface of the fabric is a very hydrophobic material. So, the molecule of the agent thus becomes oriented with the hydrophobic moiety pointing away from the surface. So, all the C13 groups are pointing or C 17 groups are pointing out and because they are pointing out, they generally provide a relatively effective release of whatever film that you have had. So, linking with the paper is least because it is now being covered in some way. So, you have a release paper, then you can print actually by any method, people can use screens to print. Sometimes it may have a additional backing layer because the plastisol print is very thin. So, you may have a backing layer which can give a bit more st stable. So, the more film could get a bit of a easy transfer. That is all I think we are looking at the possibility of transfer printing. 
So, this can be done, this kind of a thing can be done at different temperatures depending upon what you are doing up to 190, time could be tall. So, what happened? The film gets softened and forced onto the fabric, so wait till everything gets cooled and then you can remove the paper. So, simple process, but we now know that there is something called a film which is on the paper which finally gets transferred onto the fabric may not be able to withstand the rigors of textile use, but it is done. So, simple sequences of this type where there are many heating elements along the surface or some kind of a blanket which is forcing the paper and the fabric together and one can hopefully get the transfer or release of the film from the paper. So, the whole thing, the printed element, printed part can come out. So, that is all uh, we would like to talk about. So, melt release is not so much of a you know, use, but people had tried this. You can try to get some papers and learn about it. Some of the binders that we discussed is cellulose, acetate, ethyl cellulose, carboxymethyl cellulose. You can look at the chemistry of these uh, details so that you know what differences they have and you can try and correlate with uh, their effect on the transfer rate during sublimation process. All right, so we stop this. So, the transfer printing we are now closing and we can talk about next which we will call as a digital printing. Thank you.